Today You Die is the Steven Seagal movie where he finally showed the world what his fans had known all along. That's what I was hoping. He's a terrible human being with zero talent. You found me out, didn't you? The movie starts off with some stupid tarot card sh** that makes you wonder if it's even the right movie. Unfortunately, it is. Not only does nothing happen, but even if it did, it's all just a fucking dream anyways. I had an awful dream. Dreams are symbolic. That's right. This is one of those Seagal movies where he can't be bothered to voice his own lines. I have to give the voiceover guy props though. He really nails the incoherent mumbling. Later on, maybe you tell me what you saw now. Seagal then does what all normal people do at 1 a.m. and quizzes his girlfriend on the dumbest shit possible. Hey, where'd you get this painting? Saw it in a dream. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. While you know Seagal's pissed that she's wasting his money on this nonsense, he also doesn't want to get stabbed in his sleep by this complete f***ing psycho. I thought you like it too. You're right about that, I like it. Suddenly, Seagal goes full ninja and breaks into this apartment. Not only is this definitely Seagal, but it's also completely believable that all of his weight can be supported by this tiny little window. So now he's inside and is for some reason wearing a completely different outfit. Then in a crazy coincidence, the bus driver from Speed was also planning on robbing the place at the exact same time. Thanks for doing the heavy lifting. So Seagal kills him. As he's leaving, he decides he hasn't insulted the audience enough and has a fight scene that's 99% body double and only a split second of Seagal used over and over. We never find out who any of these people are, which is okay because we also don't give a shit. Seagal and his irritating girlfriend You gotta change your life, Harlan. Then pack up and move to Las Vegas. When they get there, they drive by this children's hospital that has a going out of business sign like it's a fucking Toys R Us. So anyways, Seagal meets Max, who's heard of Seagal's legendary driving. I hear you're a great driver. The movie never explains where he heard that or what the hell this crazy old man is even talking about. What are you staring at? Seagal tries to go legit and now drives an armored truck. While they normally wear uniforms, Seagal ain't about that life and wears whatever the fuck he wants. Look, it's a legitimate job. Which isn't true, and this old man shoots security <laughs> and makes Seagal the getaway driver. Come on, try! But why? <laughs> you already had all the money in the truck and could have just driven away. Nobody would have known anything. There was no reason to shoot the security guards. What the fuck is wrong with you? Thanks to that, they're in a high-speed pursuit across Las Vegas. And Seagal just starts murdering everyone. Seagal manages to lose everyone, hide the money, and call his girlfriend a setup. before taking a nap right in front of the police. Strong work, guys. Max is pretty pissed off about the whole thing. Find him! But that was the dumbest plan I have ever seen. Everything is under control. What did he think was going to happen? So, Seagal's in custody and being questioned by 
The DEA? When he's part of a drug deal that went south. How the f could anyone think an armored truck heist from a casino is part of a drug deal gone south? That is so stupid, but whatever. Seagal is convicted and thrown in a prison where again he gets to wear whatever the f he wants. People are also stabbed to death daily and nobody gives a sh Mean words, however, will not be tolerated. Seagal warns a gang leader that a rival gang is planning a hit on him, so they become besties. This is a cool motherfucker. No, he's not. They then make the dumbest prison break in movie history. John, my mom, Pico Pimper. Knees losing on a sunset stripper. What? Don't jump a cattle battle. What? I said good night. I have no idea why they did any of that, but since he and the guard look identical, he steals his uniform while the other inmates cause a distraction by having a food fight. They then make a quick stop at the prison tailor, and the guard's short sleeve shirt is now a long sleeve shirt, and then walk in front of the world's worst green screen. A stolen police helicopter then flies them to freedom. Since the DEA handles literally everything now, they decide the agent is to blame for the prison break. Agent knows you failed. Yeah, it happens. No, it doesn't. So we get some more painful dialogue. This is my partner right here. Walks like a black man, breathes like a killer. I have no idea what that means. You know, that's right. Anyways, this is when the movie realizes, oh shit, the plot's pretty much wrapped up, but we're only 45 minutes into it, so f it. Now it's a revenge movie. Oh, how much? Even though everyone that betrayed Seagal is either dead, Max is dead, or in prison, <laughs> this entire movie is a money laundering scheme anyways, so fucking deal with it. The first bad guy he pulls out of his ass is this guy. He walks kind of funny. You think he did some prison time? Maybe he might be out there doing a little homo promo. You two literally just got out of prison yesterday. So Seagal goes to get information out of him and ends up beating, <laughs> shooting, and blowing him up. Lord have mercy. I understand Seagal's been in prison and is a bit rusty, but for some constructive criticism, maybe next time you try and get information, you could actually ask them something. Take this six cents gun. I'm gonna blow your twin's dick off. But whatever, they have bigger problems because the sun just went out. Lord have mercy. And now it's back. That was a close one. So Seagal changes his clothes while driving and they do a stakeout here for some reason when this Asian gang shows up. I don't know if that's offensive, but it's very distracting since they're all in their 40s and 50s. Southside. The movie then devolves into complete absurdity. Did you change his diaper? You gotta change the fucking diaper, I, I'm not there. That still makes more sense than the idea that Seagal could ever do this. Now the movie takes quite a racist turn. White bitches, piece of shit. What the f are you gonna do about it, you yellow bitch? And both of these gangs kill each other. The movie never explains who any of these people are or what the point of any of this was. Seagal and the movie are now on two completely different pages. I have no idea who this guy is, but Seagal calls and threatens him I'm coming for you. before showing up at his house and beating the shit out of Randy Couture. Girl Scouts of America? <laughs> I promise I am not making any of this up. 
He then beats up whoever these guys are with a combination of a much thinner body double, doing things Seagal never could, and stock footage of him where he's wearing different clothes and is in a completely different place. Seagal makes a deal with whoever this is that he'll give him the money if they'll finally leave him alone. I'll give you the money if you promise me. After y'all get the money, this is it. It's over. I should point out that at no point in the movie has anyone been after Seagal. So whatever, he knocks out Randy Couture again as he leaves. Now Seagal and What's-His-Face set up a bunch of C4 and Claymores. I'm not a demolition expert, but I don't think you're supposed to set them all up right next to each other. So Seagal just walks into somewhere where Max is alive and playing the piano. Again, the movie never explains how the fuck Seagal knows where this is, but I stopped caring a long time ago. Seagal kills guys for some reasons. Max leaves in a helicopter. And Seagal blows it up. The movie should be over now, but for some reason it just won't end. Seagal meets up with these guys who he just beat up a few minutes ago, and I'm still not clear on who the f they are. As stupid as this may seem, Seagal's just getting started. Once uh, I give you guys the money, you're gonna leave me alone. Nice story. What the f are you talking about, lady? Nobody told any stories. What are you doing here? And where the f does this guy come from? Put down the gun. He just appears out of nowhere. You know what really gets my goat? The expression war on drugs. Do you have any idea what I make? Aspirin. What the hell is he rambling about? So the movie continues its downward spiral into complete nonsense. <laughs> and even though they're on the ground level, <laughs> Seagal somehow throws him out of the fifth floor and it's clearly a completely different person. So now, Seagal's prison husband gets outsmarted by this guy and his diabolical plan of saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Luckily, he only has one bullet. Ah! Oh, you ran out of gas? Really? Ran out of gas? Today you die, mother is that why they named the movie this? Because of this stupid fucking scene? Oh, hell no! Whatever. Seagal realizes if you add in the epilogue and credits, we're good for 90 minutes, so let's just wrap this shit up. He does have one last insult for the audience, though. This absurd green screen which makes them all appear to be about 50 to 60 feet tall. He then blows up the entire building, which he should have just done in the first place. They end up donating most of the money to that stupid children's hospital. And in a mind-blowing twist, we see Hit Girl and find out this entire movie is a prequel to Kick-Ass. Holy sh**.